Isaiah 42, 5. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. Verse 6. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by your right hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to this nation or the nations. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with Grace and Truth Today. These two verses out of Isaiah are speaking of the leader, the king, and in our case, it could even speak to our president, President Trump. It also speaks to us who are the citizens of this nation. As we look around and we see the activities that are taking place continually, to bring down the duly elected president of the United States and trying to destroy not only him, his administration, and also to do away with the promises he made which got him elected by the people of this nation. In verse 1 of Isaiah 42, it says, Behold, my servant, God's servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Now, some of you may not follow a lot of prophetic words or true prophets across this nation. But one of the truly great prophets who has spoken over this nation was Kim Clement. He passed away in 2016. But in 2014, in December of 2014 and February of 2014, he gave strong prophetic words that indicated there was a man that would come out of the people of this nation who would become the next president of the United States and who would have a great connection that no other political leaders of this nation have had in the past with Israel and his support for Israel. It also, in his words, indicated that a woman that was known for her charity would not enter the White House, but there would be a man and a woman in the White House, again I say a man and a woman in the White House, who would give honor and reverence to God Almighty. I'll put it this way, look at the honor that both President Trump and the First Lady, Melania, have given to God since their placement in the White House. I have never heard a First Lady ever lead a large congregation of people who came together to see President Trump speak in Florida pray. And yet, Melania Trump 
in halting English, prayed the Lord's Prayer over that gathering and over this nation. Now, I understand from people that are in and out of the White House know that the coming together for prayer and asking for God's wisdom is almost a daily occurrence. Look at, I'll just say, the flack from various groups and the media over the Christian witness and testimonies of Vice President Pence and his wife as they share their love of God and their desire to see God bless this nation. God has blessed us with the leadership we need in this nation to change it to bring about fresh life into this nation. And yet on the other side, as we witness, as we witness this battle that is going on for a security fence, wall, barrier, whatever you want to call it, that has been called for not by President Trump himself, but has been called for as a necessary requirement for those who work along the border, who have sworn and taken an oath to protect this nation from intrusion, meaning our border uh, security elements along the border, uh, ICE, uh, Border Patrol, Homeland Security. I'm not going to go into all the details, but that is their requirement. President Trump listened to it from that standpoint of what they say they need to protect this nation. He listened to the inputs of citizens of this nation, especially those that live along the border areas or those that have seen loved ones killed by illegal immigrants, by those that are known criminal elements of MS-13 gangs and others. And it's not just, I'll say, within the white community. It's within the Hispanic community that these people have come in and brought havoc, who have brought death and fear. And yet we have an opposition party, the Democrats, and I'm going to call them exactly what they are, the party of death. The party of death. Now, why do I say that? They are now the party of death. Just go and look at what was passed in the state of New York with a standing, get this, a standing ovation. A standing ovation for Killing on demand. I'm not even going to call it abortion because a portion of their new law for the state of New York, even if a child was to survive the most hideous of things, an abortion, that child would not be saved. It would be allowed to die on its own or killed. They've also allowed killing of ch children to be done by those that are not doctors. Do you understand? 
by those who are not doctors. In the past, the reason that Democrats and others who were the lovers of abortion were complaining, oh, there's going to be backroom abortions, unhealthy circumstances, oh, the life of the mother, etc. And yes, that did happen. That is historic fact. Abortions of that type that took place, the mothers were often left bleeding and would die. So now they've made it law. They've now made it law. And I just read this morning that the state of of Vermont, you know, Bernie's state, is going to make it a constitutional amendment that it is the right, it is a constitutional right to be in the state of Vermont that it's okay okay to kill a child. As was also written, in the state of New York, they don't have a death penalty for criminals. But they'll kill a child with no consequences. Do you understand where I'm coming from? That we as a nation, not only the Democrats, but we as a nation, the church has not stood up and just said, no, this is not going to be done. This is not going to be done in our nation. We are a nation that is for life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness that's who we, how we were founded. And yet we have come to this degree where we're making it law to kill children. We have a president who is for life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And I say, even the pursuit of happiness, law and life and pursuit of happiness, even for aliens or immigrants, if they come to this nation where that was at one time our foundation, if they will come legally. We have seen, he has seen, all of our Political people have seen the results of open borders in Europe that has taken place for years. In France, they have places you can't go if you are a non-Muslim. Sweden has some of the same places. England has some of the same places. And yet... We find here in America that we've seen a couple of Muslim women who are now Congress women who have said most vile things against President Trump, also against Vice President Pence, based upon their religion based upon their thought patterns of what they would like to see take place in this nation. They did not swear upon the Bible. They swore upon the Koran when they were brought into office. The Koran is in total opposition to the United States and what we stand for as a nation what we have built, the foundation of our religious heritage, in total opposition. They didn't swear upon the protection of the Constitution even. 
Do you understand that also gaining political gain in a nation step by step is their plan that was established by the Muslim Brotherhood. All you have to do is look at Europe and what has happened. And that's exactly what they want to take place here in America. Now, I want you to think about this. I am going to read some more in Isaiah 42, and I want you to understand my introduction was a little bit long. But here is where we are. I'll read back at verse 6 again of Isaiah 42, and then I will continue on for a number of verses. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nation or nations. And then starting in verse 7. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those who dwell in darkness from the prison. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images or false gods. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Now I am declaring new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you, to you. And then in verse 14, we've seen some of the new things and not the things that God would have us to do. I have kept silent for a long time. This is God speaking. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now, like a woman in labor, I will groan. I will both gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and wither all the vegetation. I will make the rivers into coastlands and dry up the ponds. I will lead the blind by a way they do not know. The blind totally represents a large group of people here in America. In pay, pay, paths that they do not know, I will guide them. I will make darkness into light before them and rugged places into plains. These are the things I will do, and I will not leave them undone. They will be turned back and be utterly put to shame who trust in idols and false gods who say to their molten images, you are our gods. We have seen, we have seen our mass media, our political elite, the far left and socialists who are trying to desperately change this nation into a nation that would worship false gods who would live in the lies that they share all i have to say is simply this when you listen to chuck schumer from new york or nancy pelosi from california you're listening to pure Lies. I'll highlight it again. There was a video that was put out on Facebook of Nancy Pelosi. No, not just a written thing, but it was by her words. Where she simply said, we can start a lie. Now she was speaking to the mass media people. We can start a lie and when you put it out, the people will believe it. Here we are. 
We as a nation, we as the church within America, need to be exposing the lies and sharing the truth. The true truth of our nation's needs and the true truth of God's word and how it applies to individuals, how it applies to the church, how it applies to this nation if we are to receive the blessings of God, if we are to continue to receive the awesome and mighty grace of God. So I say, stand up for life. Stand up for life of the most precious. Stand up for life and truth in this nation. Because if you and I don't do that, we will be taken over And that is the goal. We will be taken over so that this broadcast that I'm making today would be shut down completely and probably because some would consider it hate speech, place me in prison. Place you in prison for worshiping the true and living God. John 15, 12, 13 says this, and I will close. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down one's life for his friends. Our greatest friend is Jesus Christ. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time on Grace and Truth Today.